It's time for another volunteer spotlight and today we are interviewing Mr. Don Pantone. How are you today? I'm just fine. So tell me where you're from. I was born in Ogden, Utah mm -hmm. and my mother was a nurse mm -hmm. in 1927 and I was born in a hospital. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids were born in homes in those days but my mother's a nurse so I was born in a hospital okay. in Ogden. Okay, and you were raised in Ogden as well? Yes, I graduated from Ogden High in 1945. So you served in the military, is that correct? Well, I was two years in the Merchant Marine right after the war mm -hmm. that ended in 45. Mm -hmm. And then I went to college and then I got my the draft law of 1948. They left the Merchant Mariners out and I became 1A again, so mm -hmm. I was at the University of Utah mm -hmm. in engineering, and so I got in Air Force ROTC, mm -hmm. and that's how I got my Air Force commission. And how long were you in the Air Force? Well, I got activated for two years, mm -hmm. and I went to aircraft maintenance officer school at mm -hmm. Chinute for nine months, and got sent back to Hill for two years, and my two years was up, and this civilian that was head of the base and tr transit was a major, and they just started a reserve unit here. He said, we're getting C-46s in the reserve. He said, why don't you join them? Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, okay, I did. <laughs> so I got discharged in January 20th, Mm -hmm. And then the first weekend in March, I was out here to my first weekend. Mm -hmm. I made second, first lieutenant after 18 months of active duty, but in the reserve you had a permanent grade, so I dug mm -hmm. out my old gold bars, mm -hmm. back to a second lieutenant and mm -hmm. reported, and I reported to Captain Hadley at squad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, I started working for him. Mm -hmm and I stayed in the reserve ever since. I had 15 years as a maintenance officer. Mm -hmm. Then they needed a commander for the base engineering squadron, and so I got put into that mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. And so I was 15 years as a as squadron, well, 10 years as a squadron. Mm -hmm. It's in my last five years at Beale Air Force Base. And how old were you when you got your pilot's license? Mm, 30 years old. I got in 1957, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was 30 years old. Okay, and what kind of aircraft did you fly? I started out in an air coop. Mm -hmm. My brother-in-law and two other guys cost a we gathered four hundred dollars each and spent sixteen hundred dollars and bought this air coop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did have my. I loved airplanes, mm -hmm. and my dad bought me for graduation about three hours dual in a J3 Cub. Mm -hmm. And then I went away for that, so mm -hmm. I didn't and got too old for the Air Force Flight School, mm -hmm. and I passed all the tests mm -hmm. uh, down in ROTC, and I graduated in the end of May mm -hmm. of 1954, mm -hmm. and my 27th birthday was in August 16th. Mm -hmm. There were no flight schools between that, mm -hmm. and I was too old for it to go to flight school, so I went to aircraft maintenance office. Okay. What aircraft did you work on? Well, in school, they had a C-46. We, mm -hmm. had, we had to turn down to be mechanics for training. We had to change the generator on an engine of a C-46. Oh, wow. And then, then uh, they had engines set up, and they were engines from C-54s. Mm -hmm. And we'd run the test sails and start the engines, and mm -hmm. that was our training. The rest was mm -hmm. more theoretical book work oh, classes. I see. Mm -hmm. 
lectures and different things. But it was nine, nine full months. We mm -hmm. ended up the last two weeks was Air Force Weight and Balance School. Mm -hmm. where you, the, you learn to weigh airplanes, compute the center of gravity, and mm -hmm. do the mathematics for mm -hmm. the weight and balance of an aircraft. Mm -hmm. You've been with Hill Aerospace Museum from the very beginning. Just about. Had, uh, Captain Hadley got finally promoted to general. <laughs> And he started, he was involved in this museum, mm -hmm. and he asked me to come and uh, if I wanted to be on the board. Mm -hmm. And the, actually the original board for this foundation were a lot of people from the re old reserve squadrons that were here. Mm -hmm. uh, General Hadley ended up commander when, when we were of the of the reserve unit, mm -hmm. he's the operations officer, and others in maintenance when we got activated for the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm -hmm. And so on the board was a couple of navigators and a couple of pilots mm -hmm. from there, and we were all the ones that got this foundation started. So you've been here from the very beginning, almost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the only thing we had was a couple airplanes up at the old building, mm -hmm. 1919. Mm -hmm. And there was, uh, Air, Air Force had a secretary. Mm -hmm. and we had an office up there, mm -hmm. and it was the offices of 1919. We had some airplanes kind of parked out around. Mm -hmm. uh, we even had a 104. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that was pretty pricey. And Daryl Greenemeyer, he was a well-known Reno aircraft mm -hmm. racer and mm -hmm. restored World War II airplanes mm -hmm. person. And he said he'd trade us, he had a B-26, mm -hmm. and so our B-26 is sitting out here. Oh. That's how we got that mm -hmm. and gave him back the 104. <laughs> so it took us about 30 years before we got a 104 back <laughs> to the museum, but mm -hmm. we finally got one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we went down General Reynolds, by then Rex Hadley, mm -hmm. the uh, first part of the museum's named after, mm -hmm. it was, it was a general, he passed away, and General Mark Reynolds, whose name is on the Education Center, became chairman of the board. Mm -hmm. And he and I and one of the enlisted guys flew down to Arkansas to look at this uh, 104 mm -hmm. that the National Museum said had, was not being properly taken care of. Mm -hmm. And we looked it over and one of the restoration sergeant from the CLSS squadron says, yeah, we can restore the Hatler, so, and so uh, we called it up here, and that's how we got the 104. Mm -hmm. The Rex, that's General Hadley, but he was <laughs> always my friend, Rex, mm -hmm. wanted me to go up to Pinedale, Wyoming, and see if this guy would give us a BT-13. He said, there's a BT-13 that's not flying. I've heard about it. So I dropped, went up there and knocked on the door and his wife asked for him and said, well, he's out, but he'll be in in just a minute. And I said, well, we're wondering if we'll, talking to him about getting this BT-13 for this museum we're trying to get going down in Ogden. Mm -hmm. She says, I don't think anybody's going to get that airplane till he dies, but you can talk to him. <laughs> he was out and he was nice, he was pleasant, mm -hmm. but he said he, he'd get the annual inspection done on it and keep the tires and it quit flying up. But mm -hmm. He told me that he took that airplane from Hill. Mm -hmm. So I went down there a place and I hauled that airplane out the gate at Hill Field in about 1945, six, something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and he kept it till this was 19, pretty close to 62. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So for quite a long time. Yeah. <laughs> this was in the early, well, 87s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when I first started coming here. So I saw a lot of airplanes come. Mm -hmm. uh, went after a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So you've been instrumental in bringing so many aircraft well, here. Well, yeah, the P-40 mm -hmm. and the uh, T-6 mm -hmm. and the P-51. Mm -hmm. We start dealing with this uh, Coletta uh, down at this uh, place by San Diego, mm -hmm. Dolzoro, California. Oh, uh -huh. and, uh he did the, he restored the T-6 that we have hanging mm -hmm. and the P-51 mm -hmm. and Val Browning paid for those, the gun family. Oh, so he uh -huh. bought those for us. And then, then we started going to Alaska mm -hmm. and that's where we got the <coughs> P-38 mm -hmm. and then the B-24. Mm -hmm. And I went out and got the 104. Mm -hmm. or was involved in that mm -hmm. and the Navy F-18 mm -hmm. and the F-18 was came from the New Orleans Naval Air Station and we got a team out there mm -hmm. <laughs> and we brought that home mm -hmm. got a C-5 oh and the 9-11 um, flyer went out and got that Mm -hmm. Steve Hatch and another guy, uh, the one that worked on the barracks building. <laughs> he and I and two guys went out to, we bought airfare mm -hmm. out to New Hampshire, mm -hmm. rented two of the biggest U-Hauls we could, drove up to Owl's Head, Maine, loaded the airplane, <laughs> drove all of the pieces of it in those two U-Hauls, we drove them back to Westover Air Force Base, mm -hmm. and Steve Hatch was in the aerial port squadron, mm -hmm. and we loaded them on pallets and mm -hmm. put them in the C-5, and all flew home in the C-5 with the airplane. And then I worked quite a bit putting it together. Mm -hmm. In fact, I built the engine for it. Oh, really? Yeah. So when you get an, an aircraft here in pieces, what does it take to put an entire aircraft together for the museum? Well, we were fortunate to having the reserve CLSS squadron. Mm -hmm. And they had a hangar up on the East Bay, mm -hmm. and they looked for projects, mm -hmm. and they supported this museum. Mm -hmm. Every one of those airplanes we went to get, we had aerial port squadron from the reserve and maintenance people from the CLSS squadron. Mm -hmm. And those guys just love to go. They look forward to spending their two weeks in the Aleutians, and mm -hmm. they get guys on active duty to go do it. Mm -hmm. I just spent my last five years as an AMA, that's Individual Mobilization Augmentee at Beale Air Force Base. Oh, wow. As the base civil engineer of Beale. Mm -hmm. So I knew about the SR-71s, so I, Flew down there. I knew the guys in CE and helped them get a crane to when the guys needed it. Mm -hmm. And they hauled it up here. And that CLSS squadron finished it and painted it and put it here it is. And that's <laughs> one of our main attractions. They love to see it. And we got one of the very last ones out of Beale. I kind of helped the guys because I've been five years weekends down at Beale and yeah. like two weeks active duty. Mm. How long did it take them to put the SR-71 together? It probably was four or five months. They hauled it up here on trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the winding room roads out of Nevada City before they got to I-80 uh, mm -hmm. was pretty scary. That was a lot of airplane. They were all on flatbed trucks. We hauled it all the way from Marysville, California, where Buell is, mm -hmm. to here. And B-47, I went out with mm -hmm. the team to get that. And where did you go to get that? Uh, Bradley Field, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Hartford. Hartford, Connecticut is mm -hmm. where Bradley Field is. Mm -hmm. And Sikorsky Aircraft mm -hmm. started a museum. Mm -hmm. And they had a very, very good museum mm -hmm. 
got hit by a tornado. And the B-24 they had out there got loose and came over and damaged the B-47. And so it sat there and again the museum got dissatisfied with what they were doing with it, mm -hmm. asked us if we wanted it, mm -hmm. and we flew Rex I and Carol Nash, she was the director of the museum mm -hmm. here, and a couple of mechanics from the CLSS squadron, mm -hmm. we took a look at it, mm -hmm. said, yeah, we want it, so we sent a team out there and mm -hmm. disassembled it, all it from Bradley up to Westover. That mm -hmm. was kind of an adventure. We needed these um, pilot cars on both sides of the convoy. Mm -hmm. And we got these two ladies that did that professionally, and mm -hmm. they really liked, <laughs> liked us and donated their services. And oh, that's when good. When we got up there, had a, the whole team out to dinner in the, one of their garages, and mm -hmm. so. That was good, but hauling that B-47 from Bradley to there was no small job, but had the wings off. Mm -hmm. And Mark and I, we were out there most of the time. We'd go down by 24 uh, Big Macs, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> haul them up to the guys for their lunch. <laughs> and so we had a good team. Mm -hmm. Okay. I went out there, oh, just years later, probably mm -hmm. about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. to a AOPA, Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association's annual meeting. Mm -hmm. So I went in and talked to the director mm -hmm. of that and told him I was with that mm -hmm. and how they were doing. And he says, oh, yeah, he says, that was one of the best operations I've ever <laughs> seen. He said, that was really a good crew, he said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they really thought we did a good job, and I, we did. And was it the P-38 you got in Alaska? P-38 we got out on Boulder Island mm -hmm. in the Aleutian chain. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about that, because that was no small undertaking. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Uh, Rex Hadley called me and said, do you want to go to Alaska and look for a P-38? Mm -hmm. I said yes, and we, he and I and the chief, uh, the chief uh, master sergeant of the CLSS squadron mm -hmm. went. The state of Alaska couldn't manage the Alaska chains, mm -hmm. and they gave that whole Aleutian chain mm -hmm. to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Mm -hmm. And the director of that service out of Anchorage was a guy named Daniel Boone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the same as <laughs> Daniel boom <laughs> of history and he he liked us and so they had this vessel mm -hmm. and every year they would put college students mm -hmm. on these isolated islands mm -hmm. kind of camping mm -hmm. as bird watchers and they watched the birds and this a vessel the Tiglets had a whole laboratory mm -hmm. for dissecting birds they could catch birds, mm -hmm. dissect them, see what they were feeding mm -hmm. and, and things. And so they were going to go out on this tour mm -hmm. to resupply their uh, bird watchers out on oh, these wow. islands. There was two bird watchers on uh, Boulder Island. Mm -hmm. So they had to go stop there. Mm -hmm. While we were there, the three of us hiked up to the wreckage of this P-38 mm -hmm. and looked at it. We told Daniel Boone, yeah, we'd like to get it mm -hmm. because uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife had authority over it and had to give it to us. Mm -hmm. And we already missed a really good P-38 mm -hmm. because Anchorage we had P-38s in World War II and mm -hmm. want to get one for their museum. Mm -hmm. And there was really one that really had a good wing and a mm -hmm. good thing. Mm -hmm. And this curator of the Anchorage Air Museum mm -hmm. got Alaska to make it a historical thing mm -hmm. so that we couldn't touch it. So 
we had to settle for this one, which was a lot worse shape mm -hmm. than that would have been. Mm -hmm. That would have really been a bonus for us mm -hmm. if we could have got it. Yeah. So we said, yeah, we could get it. Mm -hmm. And so it was 93, mm -hmm. I think. And then the next year, we started getting the team together to go get it. Mm -hmm. We found a pilot, mm -hmm. took him with us, and got airlift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Rex and the pilot and John Lindquist and I, uh, we hired the, uh, a boat. Mm -hmm. It's called the Polar Bore, and that was the landing craft. You can see pictures of it on mm -hmm. our pictures. And Peter Schwartz was the owner, captain of the vessel, mm -hmm. and he was an interesting person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was born in East Germany, mm -hmm. and when the Russians came, his father was an engineer at Panamunde, which was that R and D set part of Germany, mm -hmm. where they developed all of their high-tech weapons. He was an engineer, but he had tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. When the German troop come, he kept coughing, and they thought he was sick, mm -hmm. and didn't take him back to Russia like they did a lot of the other Good. German mm -hmm. engineers and scientists. They mm -hmm. took them to Russia. Mm -hmm. He died shortly after, and Peter made an escape through the Iron Curtain and got to Alaska and had wow. this ship built, mm -hmm. and we hired him to take us out and get the T-38. Mm -hmm. And then we got a C-5 to bring it here, and I think we trucked it that back down to Dilzora mm -hmm. to Ed Coletta's business, and he restored the P-38. Mm -hmm. And the next year, we still hired Peter Schwartz again mm -hmm. to take us over to Great Sitkin Island to get the B-24. <laughs> and the B-24 was a much bigger airplane, mm -hmm. and it was a lot farther from the shore. It was up a hill, on, oh, two or three times as far from the shore mm -hmm. as the P-38 was. Mm -hmm. And then the bay for the P B-24 was full of moss, mm -hmm. and Peter couldn't take the boat all the way in the dock, so he dropped it on an anchor mm -hmm. about 40 yards out in the water. Mm -hmm. And we had a, uh, and we had to use his winch, mm -hmm. and I kind of conjured up the good friend four rolls, three rolls of surplus. Uh, Minuteman transporter erector cables oh, that wow. had gotten rejected. Mm -hmm. And we used those cables mm -hmm. to run the boat, has a winch, you know, mm -hmm. when you yeah. turn around mm -hmm. and, uh, up to there mm -hmm. and used it to pull the parts on a uh, pallet all the way down. And then to get it to the water, the Japanese did a lot of deep sea fishing and all of their boys mm -hmm. got washed up on the beach mm -hmm. and the guy, guys gathered all these things and we'd tie it to their parts mm -hmm. and fold it out to the dock of the uh, polar bear mm -hmm. and then the winch would pull it up, all those parts back in there. I took a whole bunch of my pictures mm -hmm. of that. I thought. My kids would probably throw these away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I so I thought I'd give them, and so I gave them to Aaron and mm -hmm. Justin. They're just three by five photos in a mm -hmm. photo album. Oh, I forgot about the Jenny. <laughs> Rex heard about the Jenny, and so we got in our bonanza and flew down and looked at it. It was an airworthy airplane, mm -hmm. and the guy was f taking people for rides in it mm -hmm. for money. And I guess he died. Mm -hmm. um, he was manager of one of the airports. He passed away, and his daughters wanted to sell it. Mm -hmm. Was and this in California? Yeah, down in Tracy, correctly. California. Okay, that's right. By the National Atomic Research Laboratory. Okay, yeah, there. that's right. So, the day of Thanksgiving, so we, Rex had a big trailer. He had a lot of antique cars, mm -hmm. and he hauled those to different shows in his big trailer. Mm -hmm. 
and my son-in-law had a big four-place closed-in snowmobile trailer. Mm -hmm. And so Steve Hatch and I think it was the guy that built the 104, we checked a 40-foot flatbed out of the motor pool here. Mm -hmm. And so here three of us carried land down. <laughs> uh, General Mark Reynolds, before he was, his, he was a one-star general mm -hmm. at uh, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And so he called and got us all uh, uh, roomed. We drove all that caravan down to Sacramento in one day, the, the Friday after Thanksgiving. <laughs> and then um, Saturday we drove from there down to Tracy mm -hmm. and took the airplane apart. And these guys disassembled a little while. Mark and I had to go chase the Harbor Freight store and mm -hmm. buy some big tarps mm -hmm. to cover the stuff. Mm -hmm. And we got things, and some of them wouldn't, we had to leave the back doors open on the trailer <laughs> and, and put a can, uh, one of those covers we bought over. And, but we put the fuselage sitting on its wheels right on this flatbed trailer mm -hmm. with, I think, I think the elevator, I don't think we took the elevator off because it wasn't more than eight feet wide mm -hmm. from there. But we changed it down and kind of <laughs> covered up the cockpit and that was something. Mm -hmm. so, and we hauled them all the way home, <laughs> back to the BOQs. At, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the base, and mm -hmm. the next morning we drove home, <laughs> pulled it in, and uh, we put it together here. I had to go borrow a tensiometer from the Ogden Airport, mm -hmm. the manager there to measure the tension in all those cables that hold mm -hmm. it together. Mm -hmm. They have certain tensions, and the, we had to get them all equal, so mm -hmm. we needed a tensiometer. Mm -hmm. We put it together. Yeah, I worked quite a bit of time on that all by myself, putting it together. In fact, I was. That's when we were building this balcony that mm -hmm. goes along there. This mm -hmm. company was welding in that, mm -hmm. and they were doing it after hours, mm -hmm. and somebody had to be there, so, mm -hmm. and close up the museum. <laughs> so I'd come out and work on the airplane, and I mm -hmm. worked on both the uh, right flyer mm -hmm. all by myself, <laughs> putting it together, because I was the guard for those guys, and when I went home, <laughs> close up the museum and go home. But you've been here for so long that yeah. you've seen a lot of changes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still there. So over the years, what has been your favorite thing about volunteering here? Just loving the airplanes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still walk through there and I look at those airplanes and some of the things I remember about them and mm -hmm. I just kind of love all of them. I guess the P-38 and the B-24. Mm -hmm. That, they were the farthest away and the most work and the mm -hmm. biggest effort that mm -hmm. we did to mm -hmm. get air, airplanes here. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of doing, getting C-5s, mm -hmm. <laughs> getting people up there, mm -hmm. getting that, and getting, paying for the polar bear, getting yeah. the dollars, because those trips, I think, each summer was $25,000 for the polar bear. And the foundation had to come up with those dollars. Mm -hmm. And and getting the, the crews together and they'd camp out on this in tents on the shore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, take rations. Mm -hmm. All that stuff, how to get hauled from here up to the polar bear. Getting all of these aircraft it sounds like was quite an adventure. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> what are some things that you enjoy doing, uh, like some hobbies you enjoy doing when you're not at the museum? When I'm not at the museum? Mm 
work on airplanes and fly them and travel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done really a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. I wanted to thank you for taking time to sit down with us for this interview. We appreciate all that you do for us and all that you have done for us because you've helped this museum so much from the time that it opened until now. You've brought a lot of our aircraft in and we really appreciate all that you've done to help put those aircraft together and restore them. So thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. I've enjoyed all the time I've spent at the, for and with the museum. Thank you.